half hour, a local woman is being tested for Ebola. The patient just back from West Africa. She checked herself into the hospital with symptoms, and doctors are now testing her. They say it should not take long to get these test results back, but they are not taking any chances in the meantime to keep doctors, workers, and other patients safe, just in case. News 13's Catherine Mazzone has more. A 30-year-old woman is in isolation at UNM Hospital with symptoms matching that of Ebola. A sore throat, headache, fevers, and muscle aches. Officials say she just returned from West Africa, where she was a teacher. Health officials say she claims to have had no known exposure to the potentially deadly virus. But doctors here and state officials want to be sure. Our index of suspicion is relatively low. We think that it's likely that she has another illness, but we want to be extremely careful. And that's the reason UNM hospital officials are taking extra safety measures. We um, make sure to minimize the number of people that go in and out of the room. And right now what CDC is recommending, and we're following that recommendation, is actually having people on what are called contact and droplet precautions. That means staff have to wear gowns, gloves, eye protection, and a face mask when they go into her room. It's eased worries for some with loved ones who are patients here. Initially, I was a little concerned. I do have several friends that work here at the hospital, and they kind of reassured me. But if they hadn't heard it from friends working here or the news, they may not have heard it at all. The hospital says there's no protocol that says they have to tell other patients about the possible case. Because it's protected health information, um, I think obviously this may uh, change that a little bit. But at the same time, we are doing um, everything we can to protect patients and our staff to make sure that, um, that there's no risk of transmission. It's garnered mixed feelings from those visiting the hospital. That scares me because um, what if my child had a cough and I had to take him to the urgent care? What happens then? I, can be, I put him at risk and I put myself at risk. It's just such a rare occasion that something like that would happen here. It doesn't seem to affect me whatsoever. Catherine Mazzone, KRQE News 13. Doctors say Ebola cannot be transmitted through the air or casual contact, such as eating or drinking after someone. It can only be spread through direct contact. These things include a cut on the skin or mucous membranes. And according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Ebola or Ebola, excuse me, quote, poses no substantial risk to the U.S. general population. And doctors say a person with Ebola is not contagious until symptoms appear. Well, the Ebola outbreak is the worst in parts of West Africa, where the World Health Organization, the WHO, says extraordinary measures are now needed. The WHO says it's stepping up its response to the deadly disease. Meanwhile, in Liberia, experts are worried Ebola could spread through the capital's largest slum. This after an angry mob attacked a treatment center this weekend. People looted the clinic, removing contaminated medical equipment and dirty bedding. And during all that, doctors think as many as 29 patients just left the clinic. All right, of course, when the test results on the patient here in New Mexico get back, we will bring them to you both on KRQE on the air and online anytime at KRQE.com. Liz. An attorney assisting the Central American undocumented immigrants being held in Artesia is comparing the facility to the Guantanamo Bay prison, which houses terrorists. The El Paso Times reports attorney Pamela Munoz says the immigrants are being deported out of the U.S. without due process as if they pose threats to national security. The U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement issued a statement saying that their family residential centers are an effective and humane alternative to keep families together as they await the outcome of immigration <clears throat> hearings, saying that everyone has access to legal counsel. Well, 535 now. Today, Albuquerque State Councilors are expected to vote on a controversial plan to allow voters to decide if pot penalties should be reduced here in the city. This is basically the same plan Progress Now New Mexico has been pushing for. The group spent months collecting thousands of signatures to force the issue on the ballot in November. But the day before they were due, the city clerk told them they needed more than what they were initially told. With the plan, anyone caught with an ounce or less of pot would face a $25 fine and no jail time. We'll let you know what the council decides. Also today, councilors are set to vote on two different plans to fix the police oversight the commission. That's the group that's supposed to police the police department. I think the, what we have now, the ordinance, it's lost, does not work, especially when you only have two members left that are meeting. You can't do it with that. 
Councilor Brad Winter is pushing for his and City Councilor Ray Garduño's plan that would overhaul the Police Oversight Commission. It would remove what's left of the current commission, give the new one more money, and let it appoint its own independent review officer. It would also force the chief to respond to the commission's recommendations. But Councilor Ken Sanchez here has another plan. It would abolish the current POC and wait for the final Department of Justice report before creating a new commission. He says creating a new POC right now would simply be a waste of time. And councilors are also planning to vote on whether they should have a say on who becomes police chief. It would also give the city council power to fire the police chief with just cause as well. Now, a vote on a citywide tax hike is also on the agenda. The agenda says the tax increase would be equal to one eighth of one percent, basically 12.5 cents per $100. And it could bring in $16 million a year. Councilor Clarissa Pena says it will be used for services for the mentally ill, substance abuse and homelessness. The Albuquerque Public School District is now in the market for a new superintendent. On Friday, the school board unanimously approved Winston Brooks' resignation. If the Public Education Department approves the deal, Mr. Brooks will walk away with a $350,000 payout. He was making about $250,000 a year and had two years left on his contract. The district is not saying why Mr. Brooks resigned, but the school board recently hired a private attorney to investigate a, quote, serious personnel issue. Sources tell us it was about Brooks' wife. Brooks, his wife, and the school district are not allowed to talk about all of this under the settlement agreement.